Hi, I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com, aka The Karate Nerd. In today's video, I want to show you a couple of very important principles when it comes to Sanchin Kata, one of the most widely practiced forms in traditional karate across the globe, especially in styles that come from Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. Check it out! First of all, let's start with the word itself, the name of the kata, san chin. San, as you might know, ichni san, means three, the number three. Chin refers to battles or struggles or fights. There are many different interpretations from researchers in karate as to what these three battles actually refer to. For example, it could be the mind, the body and the technique, known as shingitai in Japanese. But it could also be related to numerology, to mysticism and symbolism, something that is very important in China. And as we all know, the original roots of old school karate were heavily influenced by the Chinese martial arts. That's why there are so many different kata that have numbers in their names. For example, Sanseiru, 36, Supa Rinpei, 108, Goju Shiho, 54, the list goes on. So what makes Sanshin Kata so special anyway? Well, if you compare it to many other kata, it is not as fast and hard and snappy as you would tend to think of when you see a regular karate kata. On the opposite, it looks pretty soft and slow and to the untrained eye, it might even look boring. But if you understand the history of Sanshin Kata, you will realize that it contains a lot more than what meets the eye. According to historians, there was a monk at a temple in China known as the Shaolin Temple. His name was Daruma and he was responsible for popularizing Zen Buddhism. He taught different types of breathing exercises to the other monks at the monastery, at the temple, so that they wouldn't fall asleep during meditation. It has been said that these exercises slowly evolved into what we today call Sanshin Kata. However, Sanshin Kata is not exclusive to karate. It exists in many different Chinese Kung Fu styles and in China it's called Sam Qian, which means the same thing as the Japanese word Sanshin, three battles. So what's the big deal about Sanshin Kata anyway? Why is it so important? Well, it's called the bodybuilding of karate for a good reason. It is an isotonic and isometric strengthening exercise that improves your lung capacity, strengthens your heart, massages the lymph system, teaches you correct alignment, relaxation, tension, structural integrity, and a lot of more stuff that I can't even spell. However, for these very same reasons, Sanshin Kata might also be one of the most misunderstood forms that we practice in karate today. The reason might be because many people pursue karate as a sport today and Sanshin Kata is not something you can win a championship with. In fact, if you compete with this Kata, you're very likely to lose the first round. And this is sad because I see a lot of top level athletes competing in Kata who seem to lack the basic kinesthetic awareness that Sanshin Kata develops. So even if you practice sports karate, make sure that you watch this video to understand how to develop your karate as a whole by focusing on the micro aspects of Sanshin Kata. Now, to understand Sanshin Kata, I think it's important that we go through the whole body. We're gonna start with the feet and then move upstream through all the basic major joints in the human body to see if there's anything we can unlock by looking at the physiology, the biomechanics of the human body to improve your understanding of Sanshin Kata. So the basic Sanshin stance kind of looks like this in most styles. And of course there are differences depending on what style of karate you practice. Essentially you want there to be a straight line between the heel of your front foot and the toes of your back foot so that your stance is not too big and not too narrow. This gives you the optimal stability because you're essentially stacking your joints on top of each other since it's hip width or shoulder width apart. Now something that immediately might strike you as 
odd or different in the Sanchin stance is that the front foot points to the inside while the back foot is relatively straight. This internal rotation of the front foot gives you stability and tension. It gives you torque as you try to grip the floor with your feet, actively creating that stability throughout the hip joint and knee joint that you need to perform Sanchin optimally. However, a common mistake when you're in the Sanchin stance is that you tend to collapse your knees. This is not a good thing, especially if you have a history of injury in the knee because your ACL inside of your knee doesn't really like that idea of collapsing the knees. So make sure that you actively twist and rotate and try to grip the floor with your toes all the way from the bottom up. This doesn't mean that your groin should be exposed. On the contrary, if you go to Okinawa, you will usually see masters trying to kick their pupils between the legs to make sure that their thighs are close enough so that you can't be kicked in the groin. However, that shouldn't mean that your knees collapse. Make sure that they're not buckled in if you want to save your knee joint from a lot of pain. To understand how to properly create this correct alignment, which gives you the torque and stability that you need in your Sanchin stance, you can actually try this exercise right here. Grab any physical object. In this case, it's just a simple focus pad, but it could be a, a medicine ball or whatever, a pillow perhaps, or a basketball. And then try this. Put it between your knees, and then all you do is squeeze. Act as if you want to squeeze it as hard as you can. You should feel some type of tension building up in your lower body right now. And that exact same tension is what you want to recreate solo without the object. To see how this affects your stability and core strength, try this. Grab the same object again and then lie down. From this position, Put the object between your knees and then just do a basic sit-up, like so. And now try without the object between your knees. You will instantly feel a drop in the intra-abdominal pressure because squeezing your knees together really helps you activate the glutes, kick in your pelvic twist and then get that strength that you need in the core for the Sanchin Kata.